Well, hello everyone. How's it going? It's me, Jaylene, also known as fem I wanted to hit you with a topic today that has its very own category in the BDSM world. Over the knee spanking. But first, spank that little subscribe button for me. I will cover three key things in this video. Number one, what is it? Number two, why do people like it? And number three, three over the knee tips. Number one, what is it? Otherwise known as OTK, this spanking activity in the BDSM world, the usual assumed position is one person is sitting here in a chair and another person is bent over with their buttocks placed pristinely right here for a good little spanking session. OTK not only asserts pain, but also asserts a certain power dynamic in itself with the position of both the giver and the receiver. With one person sitting upright in full control, i.e. the top, and the receiver is bent over the top's knees with their buttocks showing pristinely right here, sometimes with their clothing pulled down or their skirt pulled up to reveal their bare butt or their panties. One pro thing about this position is that the top does assume a lot more control of the placing because the person's head is down here, their feet are down here, it's a lot harder for them to manage to get up and kind of run away from the punishment itself. So that brings me to number two. Why do people like it? For the bottoms. Or back in the earlier days, this was used as punishment for a misbehaved child. So either whether they experienced it themselves or maybe they saw it in movies, media, this can almost provide a certain nurturance aspect for the spanky. Almost reenacting in a safe consensual setting what has been imprinted on them in the younger years and has evolved as they aged and grown up into adults into a sexy little turn on. This activity though doesn't solely have to appear with just age play, though we do see it in a lot of kinky school role plays. We can also see it however as a very pure form of humiliation as we do see the bottom, their face is facing down to the ground, it's a very submissive position in itself with their whole little bottom self being exposed and vulnerable, while the spanker is sitting up straight in their spanking throne, like a power stance. For the tops, why do they like it? Not only do you have an easy power stance position that you assume when you are doing over the knee spanking, but you also have a lot more control over your sub itself and they try to avoid or try and squirm away from your hips. Playfully, of course. But moving on to number three, three tips for OTK spanks. Number one. Bed spanks. Because I am tiny and I cannot hold a large human's weight upon my little legs, I go for the comfier option of sitting upright on a bed with my legs spread out in front of me just like this, sitting upright as I am in this chair. I place my legs together to form a comfortable little hill, if you will, for my sub to kind of rest their hips over. But because the mattress is on either side of us, their full weight is not going to be fully on me. Plus, if you want to spank for a long time, it's much comfier for the bottom in this way. I'm a nice dom, what can I say? Number two tip is lock him down. In this activity, you can have their hands and or their feet bound so they cannot go anywhere. And if the receiver of the spanks is trying to move their head from the down position, into the up position, what you can do is basically take your hand and grab at the very base of the neck and force it down either into the mattress if you're on a bed or force down to the very bottom of the floor if they are over a chair. The reason why I say the base of the neck is because a lot of the neck muscles and movement really does help a person get up from something. So if you have it right there, it really helps ground them down. And lastly, number three spice up the punishments. If you're slightly into choking, what you can use is a collar and a leash. Be sure to make sure that the collar ring and the leash attachment is at the back of the neck rather than the front. So when you're pulling up, it's not making their head go sideways, but rather just like this. For choking, however, be sure to watch my choking play video for more tips and safety info. Another one that you can do, which can be a huge torture for some subs, is a little tickle whilst they're in this vulnerable position. Because the bottom's feet are gonna be basically like this, and they're gonna have their hips over you, you can have them tied and bound together, you can pull them up together and give them a little tickle. Or if you don't have any bondage gear, simply tell your sub to just lift their feet up, and if they do move them away from that position, they're just gonna get harder spanks. <laughs> be sure to give your spanky some sweet aftercare, even if they have been bad and they did deserve that punishment. As well, reach out to me for a one-on-one -on -one coaching call if you're craving of how to have a better spanking hand or a better dominant presence in the bedroom. My website link is below for contacting me.
Also, be sure to bend over for that like and subscribe button if you learned something new today. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. It is me, Ben Forth. Mwah.